From 1927 to 1931, March Field served as an aviation training facility, making flyers out of young cadets during four months of primary training. Highlight for each class, naturally, was the graduation, because the training was extremely difficult. Here, Major Millard F. Harmon presents well-earned diplomas to cadet graduates. With the toughest part of their training behind them, cadets could look forward to further training at Kelly Field, Texas. Perhaps the most famous incident to occur following reopening of the field in 1927 was the refueling of the question mark in January 1929. The question mark, a Fokker C-2A from March Field, took off from California's Van Nuys Airport and stayed aloft for nearly one week. Following the unprecedented flight, the question mark landed at Van Nuys Airport. All concerned appeared happy to receive congratulations following their record-shattering flight. The question mark crew included Sergeant Roy Ho, Lieutenant E.R. Quisada, Lieutenant Harry Halverson, Captain Ira Aker, and pilot Major Carl Tui Spots. Team March made headlines again in 1932 when blizzards cut off Hopi and Navajo reservations across the southwest. Air crews overcame severe conditions to successfully drop food and supplies to the stranded population. This humanitarian effort demonstrated yet another benefit of long-range air power. During 1932, March Field was visited by Governor Rolfe of California. At a wing review in his honor, the governor saw the Keystone bombers and smaller P-6 and P-12 pursuit aircraft on the flight line, witnessed the P-6 and P-12 taking off, then returning in a sweep over the field. Then, in came some Keystone bomber crews for their impressive flyby. Here is Lieutenant Colonel H. H. Arnold with the governor, watching the remainder of the first bomb wing's Keystones as they swoop in low over March's flight line, perhaps signaling the end of an era, as single-wing B-10 bombers would join the Air Corps inventory that same year. Governor Rolfe expresses his appreciation to host Lieutenant Colonel Arnold, Alarmed by Japanese aggression and renewed warfare in Europe, Air Corps leaders pushed for even newer designs. In 1939, the relative isolation of March provided the airspace and security needed to flight test the new Lockheed P-38 fighter. The long-range, hard-hitting Lightning would eventually see service in every theater of war. During 1944, 26 Women Air Force Service Pilots, WASPs, were assigned to March Field. They flew the AT-6 aircraft, 
towed aerial targets for gunnery practice, worked in the control tower, and even pumped gas. The installation also produced two Medal of Honor recipients, First Lieutenant Donald J. Gott and Second Lieutenant William E. Metzger. These heroes had attempted to fly their heavily damaged B-17 Flying Fortress back to friendly territory in an attempt to save the life of a severely injured crew member. Both men were awarded the medal posthumously for their actions. war came to America. Staggered by initial defeats, the Allies regrouped. The vast industrial capacity of the United States shifted into high gear and the bomber became the Air Corps' instrument of victory. In 1942, March was selected to train thousands of crewmen for the world's largest bomber force, first for B-24 Liberators and later the B-29 Super Fortress. A post-war march would also find itself aligned under the newly activated Tactical Air Command. On August 15, 1947, the famed 1st Fighter Wing assumed the role of host tactical unit at March Field. In an odd sequence of events, the wing would be discontinued on 24 August, 1948, and then reactivated on August 22, 1948. The first would stay at March until July of 1950. The outbreak of war in Korea in 1950 offered another challenge for the 22nd Bomb Group, this time involving B-29 aircraft and crews from March Field. The B-29 was capable of 357 miles per hour speeds and had a range of 3,250 miles and could deliver 20,000 pounds of bombs on enemy targets. In July 1950, the 22nd Bomb Group deployed to Okinawa for combat duty and flew its first strike against enemy forces in North Korea just nine days later. By the end of October 1950, all significant targets for heavy bombers had been destroyed and the 22nd redeployed to March Field. ceremony took place in January 1957 when Major General Archie Old Jr. returned to March Field with three B-52 crews following a record-setting around-the-world flight. General Curtis LeMay, Commander-in-Chief of the Strategic Air Command, was present to congratulate the crews following the milestone flight led by General Old, then 15th Air Force Commander. The crews, in what was known as Operation Power Flight, flew around the world in 45 hours and 19 minutes, thereby almost cutting in half the previous world record of 90 hours. It was a proud moment for crews and families on the ramp area. As General Old put it years later, it was a heck of a good training flight, which helped demonstrate SAC's long-range capability. Naturally, crew members look forward to returning to their loved ones.
The first bombing raid by a wing stratofortress was launched in November 1966. After that, the 22nd participated in many more bombing missions during partial deployments. When the entire wing deployed to Guam in March 1967, things began to really get rough for the enemy. Working around the clock for six months, each crew on a single sortie dropped 70,000 pounds of conventional bombs on the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese, with an accuracy of 99.6%. Wing crews flew more than 3,000 missions and dropped more than 300,000 pounds of 500 and 750 pound bombs. Crews from Marchfield would be called on many more times during the remainder of the Vietnam War. Yet no challenge was as great as that offered by the Linebacker II bombing operation over Hanoi, North Vietnam in December 1972. Four March B-52 flyers were killed and five were made prisoners of war during these high-risk raids. <laughs> 